Somebody shout fire. Amen. You're going to declare this loud and clear. Hallelujah. You're going to make some certain declarations. Hallelujah. This morning. Amen. I'm in, I'm, I'm, I'm in a few in Georgia Thanksgiving. For every celebration, amen, for every celebration comes the devil's celebration. For every addition of thanks to God, the devil also holds his own thanksgiving. The devil is a major competitor in the kingdom of darkness. Hallelujah. In the kingdom of God, the devil says, I will exalt my throne above God. So every time God wants to win souls, the devil also wants to win souls. Every time the saints of God gather to celebrate, the devil too gather to celebrate. Every time, are you hearing me today? Every time Christians begin to shout prayer, the devil too wants to add to his kingdom. But today, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are going to advance. Whatsoever the devil is trying to have prepared, whatsoever the devil has planted in your spirit, amen, the devil to, the, the devil, if you have to defeat the devil, amen, it, it, it depends on the age of the devil. Hallelujah. 500 years devil takes a longer prayer, longer fasting, longer anointing. Amen. But every structure that is being built, amen, hallelujah, of yesterday or two days ago can easily be destructed, destroyed, and all by the power of God. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, what I'm trying to say, the devil always targets what they call food. Somebody say food. In the major around America, amen, turkey is being displayed, hallelujah, as a major meal for the celebration of Thanksgiving. And if I was a devil, what would I do to Christians? How would I pollute them? How would I poison them? Amen. The only thing is to do what? Tackle the talking. That's why a lot of Christians, some people who are very prophetic, avoid the talking on Thanksgiving because that is a major, major, uh, um, if, if, if you are a jihadist or a terrorist, you want to, amen? Hallelujah. Those are the areas you want to tackle or poison. Because why? Major Christians will be dealing with that. Hallelujah. Why were we getting up this morning to pray? Because if you miss this morning prayer, I don't know how we can, we can do it. Yesterday, hallelujah, glory to God. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Today, the Bible says, better is the end at the beginning thereof. Yesterday, I wasn't able to show up, but today, in the name of Jesus, you are here now. Hallelujah. And so, therefore, any any unwanted material, can you hear me? Hallelujah. Any unwanted material, any material that is not of God, any deposit in your body that is not of God, today will be disrupted, will be destroyed, will be evacuated from your body by the fire of the Holy Ghost. Can you hear a good amen? Hallelujah. Get ready today because whatsoever was prepared on the table, either through food, amen, hallelujah, amen, whether you like it or not, they came with spirits. They came with spirits. There is no food that doesn't come with spirits, amen, hallelujah. Daniel said, amen, I would choose not to eat of the king's deities, amen, but choose to what? Eat on vegetables and to eat vegetables and water. Why? Because this is what helped him. This is what prepared him. This is what cleansed him. He didn't want the spirits of Jezebel. He didn't want the spirits of Babylonian spirits to enter into the food and pollute, corrupt the spirit, man. Amen. Sometimes when you eat and you go to bed and you begin to see yourself eating in the dream, it means that food has been devoured. Every time you eat in your know, Thanksgiving, you go to bed, you begin to see somebody feeding your dream last night, it means automatically the food you ate is from the which is table. Food was devoured, polluted. I'm saying it again, I'm saying it for somebody. If you dream last night that you ate food in the dream, Automatically, the food you consumed in Thanksgiving was not clean, and that is why we are praying this prayer. Hallelujah! We're gonna shout this prayer loud and clear. Amen. Allah baraka sunderiya paradiya paradish. What? You you cook your food and you 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 and you ate food in the drink. Hey, huh? You cook the food, but what drink do you drink? Did you buy did you make everything? Nobody brought anything at all. You mean? Listen, listen to me. Amen. The same is food. Uh-huh. That's it. The, 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 this is that's how you read your spirit, okay? Now, just because you dreamt of such things doesn't mean that that's the end of the world. No, 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 no. You always understand that as long as it's you discover, the sooner you discover, the better for you. The earlier you discover, is more you can tackle such things and cleanse your spirit. Amen? Somebody says spiritual sanitation. Somebody says spiritual. What? Tuesday night. Someone saved the food.
Yes. Hmm. These are these are what they call demonic pollutions. Are you hearing me today? The demonic pollutions. Now, the greatest revelation is that you can you are able to see and to detect what is happening in your dream. Sometimes when the prophet goes to sleep, and um, your dream is actually your thermometer, amen, to tell you what happened in the day. Amen. And then so through the day you may not acknowledge or understand what took place because you are just operating and excited, amen. But there's a realm in God that by the time you see what happens, you go to your sleep. Your sleep will tell you how your day went. Do you understand? Make sense. If that's the time you saw yourself naked, you begin to see some negative dreams, in, then you know that there was an attack during the day. All right, and God is giving the opportunity to wake up and tackle such things in warfare, in prayer. It's not the time to start praying medical prayer. It's not the time to pray what serious prayer, not professional prayer, but a prayer that will drive away filth from your temple. You got the Bible says, guard your salvation with all one jealousy. You need to protect your inner man. You are guarding the temple of God. Does that make sense? Just like you would not want another man or your children to go and be sleeping around. In, if you're a pastor, you don't want them to come and be sleeping around on the altar. That's defamant. Does that make sense? You're going to be like, what? Yeah. So you have to guard the temple of God because the more you guard the temple of God within you is the manifestation of God's glory. Does that make sense? Manifestation of God's glory. So the thing is that we can eat frivolously. Hallelujah. You can eat frivolously. But if you don't pay attention to your dream, <laughs> listen to me. I can I can eat. Listen, I can be operating the full joy. Are you hearing me? Like I went to a house today, yesterday, and I was operating the full joy, blast with joy, fullness of God's glory. I entered the place because I was praying for two hours before I got there. So I was so excited. By the time I got to the house, I was like, ah, what is this one? What is this one? I'm trying to try all kinds of delicacies, right? I'm going to try all kinds of delicacies and all kinds of food, you know, amen, to see what, you know, see what is available. And when I'm trying to test all this, you know, and, uh, uh, can you hear me? Praise God. All of a sudden, I do something in my mouth. Just one little thing. I could feel the joy go down. Not the Holy Ghost, the joy of the Lord. Ah, I said, what is this? What is this? I knew something was wrong. My joy just zoom immediately. I knew. Okay, something is wrong with that. Now that's how you detect. The Bible says the joy of the Lord is what? Thy strength. In thy presence. Meaning, as long as you're in God's presence, there is what? Not half joy. There is what? Fullness of joy. So the opposite is what? What's the opposite? So if you are away from God's presence, what do you experience? Less joy. You begin to experience frustration. Okay. At that point where you begin to experience frustration, people think it's them. It's, it's the people that are upsetting you. But God is trying to signal to you that you are, you are away from his presence. That that thing you are touching does not carry God's presence. That thing you are touching is defiled. That thing you are touching is the presence of darkness. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? You can sit down by somebody. You can be so joyful. But within moments, maybe they are doing something. Maybe they are on the computer. Maybe they are focusing on something. But you can feel an heaviness on you. Come in. Get up and go to the restroom. Don't sit down there. Because they are protecting something on you. They don't say nothing. No. They just, their imagination is gone. They are watching television. But they are not communicating with you. But you are feeling heaviness by sitting there. Hey! Jump up and walk. Go to where? Hello, I'm helping you. Somebody says sensitivity. Amen. If you stay there, a spiritual blanket will come upon you. And they will cover you. And you will not even know why your spirit, your spirit is so offended or heavy. Where did it come from? It's because somebody was projecting something. Are you hearing me? As you are sitting down, you are being sensitive for every little detail that is happening to you. In the spirit. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, Rabba Baba Baba Kashande de Baby Apai. Eleven de Lebonto Ribi Aparas. Regga de Rebebe Kapa Dora Bahaya Baradish. Shout this prayer loud and clear. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus. Every stranger that entered my life. Every stranger that entered my temple. As a result of evil food, come out by fire.
fire. Regede baraka zabala mandeli bibia. Irregede rebe beke bere bibia. Irregede rebe bere rebe beke bere bibia. Regede rebe bere rebe beke bere rebe bere rebe beke bia. Sege branda rebe bere rebe beke bere bibia. Every strangers in my body. Irregede rebe bere rebe beke bere bibia. Irregede rebe bere rebe beke bere rebe bere bibia. Regede rebe bere rebe beke bere rebe bibia. Irregede rebe bere rebe beke bere rebe bibia. Regede rebe bere rebe beke bere rebe bere bibia. Regede rebe bere rebe beke bere rebe bere bibia. Regede rebe bere rebe bere rebe bibia. Sam branda rebe Baba Gabanda, Ereketer Bebia Barandia. In the name of Jesus, Sagada Baraba Baraba Gabaya, Ereketer Rebebe Bebia, Warondo Rebebe Rebebe Bebia, Elabranda Rebebe Rebebe Gabanda, Ereketer Rebebe 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 Bebia, Ragada Rebebe 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 Zekata bada raba rebe rebe bia erega de rebe 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 bia ila brada raba rebe 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 bia barra da raba raba gabanda ele branda rebe 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 bia erega de rebe 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 bia every power le branda rebe bia erega de rebe 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 bia rebe bia raba baba raba gaba raba rebe bia ele branda rebe 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 bia rebe bia rebe 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 bia raba baba raba gabanda ya every spirit that has entered my life ikaba i command it to come out by fire erega Thank you, Lord Jesus. So de be de be be a baradosh. Mom brother, Rabba boyos. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Somebody shout fire. Lay your lay your hands upon your belly now and say this loud and clear. The Bible says, "Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water." In the name of Jesus, you will pray this loud and clear. I say, "Fire of God." Enter and purge my belly. Open your mouth and come down fire. Let Jesus, shake the bra haya barats. Live round the rabba baka saba haya. Reke the rabba baya baradish. Till all things are coming out of you, speed it out. E kobron dore baby abaradish. Strangers in my body, come out by fire. Open your mouth and turn on fire. Every stranger in my body, cut out by fire. Regeneri ekatondria, ibrenderi katuria. Every stranger, every affliction, every oppression, every demonic forces hiding in my body. You strangers, you ugly spirit, I die you in the name of Jehovah. Come out by fire. Come out by fire. Come out by fire. Come out by fire. Egarada, irregeneri bebe kapaya. 
Bazum brande rebebe kepia. Arregederia. 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 Karo teri bibia. Come on by fire. Come on by fire. Come on by fire. Agarada radaria. Shedebre. Egabarada ha. I say come on by fire. I say come on by fire. Come out. Come out in the name of Jesus. Every pollution, every darkness, every seed of the wicked buried inside of me. I pull you out by fire. I pull you out by fire. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Shanda Rebebias. Shanda Ila vanda raba barebe bia baradish, shika da baraba baya baradish, ila vanda la barebe bia baradia, raba barebe bia baradia kadosh, ila vanda la barebe barebe bia kebia baradish, rege de barebe bia barebe bia baradish, azan de la vanda la barebe bia baradish, rege de barebe barebe bia barebe barebe bia baradish, e gaza da ba da raba barebe bia barebe bia. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Lift your hands up, Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost, it's your time. Lift your hands up, Hallelujah. The will of the Spirit is moving now. My Father, my Father, let the hands of fire come upon every bed. Everybody, 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 everybody. Repara kasun talibibia. Pasakatia, fire. Let the fire of God break forth in your belly. Everything that you have eaten in the dream, everything that you have swallowed, amen, that is attacking your destiny, attacking your, uh, introducing sluggishness, introducing prayerlessness, introducing forgetfulness, is, is introducing sleep, s- s- spirit of slumber, is introducing heaviness and oppression and affliction over your life and your destiny. In the name of Jehovah, introducing poverty, introducing lust and perversion. In the name of Jehovah, every unclean spirit that has gained access into you, in the name that is above every other name, I pray and I cast out that spirit uh, to lose you and let you go in the name of Jesus Christ every unclean spirit within your destiny I pull you out by fire I pull you out by fire every unclean spirit every witchcraft spirit your spirit of defilement upon that body I break your power I break your pressure in the name of Jehovah I say lose them now Kazubraha Regede Rebe Biapa Mazunta Levendeli Irragada Rababa Rebe Biaparanda let the fire of God break forth in your spirit. Let the anointing be released over you now. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Thank you, my Jesus. Every hand of the wicked over your life today, I break it now. Right now, receive. I unblock your wells. I unblock your belly. I unblock your wells. I unblock your giftings. I unblock your virtues. I unblock your talents. Out of your eye of thee shall proceed the glory of God, shall proceed the virtues of God, shall proceed the living waters of God. Let the water of God, let the water of grace begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my father. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. As you breathe in right now, the fire of God purges your belly. 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 Aha, that's it. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody shall fire. Say this after me. Say every satanic covering. Over my life and my family. Be destroyed by fire. Be consumed by fire. Let the garments of hell. Let every veil. Let every covering. Over my life and my destiny. I set it on fire. I destroy by fire. Be consumed by fire. I say be consumed by fire. I say be consumed by fire. 
I consume every plantation, I consume every seed of the wicked. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Are you tired? Hallelujah. Bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. Worship his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, worship his holy name. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. And he has done great things. He has done great things. He has done great things. Bless his holy name. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all. What the Lord has done for me, I cannot tell it all what the Lord has done for me. I cannot tell it all. He saved me and washed me with his blood. So I can shout hallelujah. I can shout hallelujah. I can shout praise the Lord. So I can shout hallelujah, I can shout hallelujah, I can shout praise the Lord. Holy Spirit, move me now, make my life full again. Spirit move over me, Spirit move over me, Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place, Holy Spirit, Thou art welcome in this place. O me, potent Father, from mercy and grace. Thou art welcome in this place. You are so welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, you are so welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Holy Spirit, thou art welcome in this place. Omnipotent Father of mercy and of grace, Thou art welcome, you are so welcome. My Father, you are 
Fill my cup, Lord. Everybody lift your hands. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this testy of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Here's my cup, fill it up and make me whole. Fill my cup, Lord, I lift it up, Lord. Please come and quench this testy of my soul. Bread of heaven, fill me till I want no more. Yes, my cup, fill it up and make me all see his glory, see his glory, see his glory come now. Praise his name, heavenly rays, see. His glory come down. See His glory come down. I need Thee, oh, I need Thee. Every hour I need Thee. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, I come to, to Thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to Thee. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. All right, let's quickly go to our scriptures today. Amen. What a mighty God. Father, we thank you. We give you the praise and the glory. Let your fresh anointing, your fresh presence be released over your world today. I pray that you will lead us, you will direct us, you will open revelations, oh God, to minister to us. I pray that Lord will be empowered by this world today in the name of Jesus. Let there be an holy hunger in death within us. Holy Spirit, set us on fire, set our soul on fire, set our spirit on fire, and make us hungry for you like never before. We break every attack of the devil, we break every schemes of the devil, we break every power of witchcraft projections in the name of Jesus. Let them be arrested by the power of the blood. Lord, reveal yourself today, even through your word. Let the fear of God brood over this prayer line today. And everyone that hears the sound of my voice, let them be blessed. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Thank God for you now. Amen. Hallelujah. There are only two people that sleeps on the prayer line. One in Minnesota and one in Boston. And that record has been kept for a long time. I'm praying. <laughs> I'm going to continue announcing it. And virtually, if it continues, I'll release the names of those people. Hallelujah. But I'm just asking that the Lord will strengthen them, revive them, and empower them. That the stronghold of slumber will break from them by the power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. If you're in Boston, shout hallelujah. Ah, if you're in Minnesota, shout hallelujah. Amen. Thank God there's no man sleeping. It's just, it's just women now. So, hallelujah. You are, you are calling from what? You talking to me? Ah. Oh, Canada. Oh, bless you. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Hallelujah. You are, you are, you are here to receive what the Lord is about to share today. Amen. We don't, we, don't, we don't forget you. We're talking about those who are sleeping. Canada is not sleeping. 
Amen. <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> Glory to God. All right. Let's go into the world. How was your Thanksgiving, everyone? How was your Thanksgiving? Now, you can't even talk. The talk is blocking your mouth. Hmm. Hey, Jesus, help us. Oh. Somebody really ate today. Hmm. Don't worry. It will be fine. By the end of the day, you 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 will be purged everything will be purged out look chapter 1 look chapter 4 let's go there quickly look chapter 4 look chapter 4 hallelujah i pray that in the name of jesus there will be a manifestation a revelation of everything that is going on, you'll be able to see and perceive what is really going on in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Being Jesus, amen, I read from verse 1. Hallelujah. Let me mute this phone so that everybody can hear me. Holy Spirit of God, we we'll thank you, we we'll bless your name in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Hallelujah. Being full of the Holy Ghost is appearance that we carry, we being drunken with the power of God. It's appearance that we carry the fullness of God. Many of us are moving half tanked. We are moving whereby the Holy Ghost have left us. Some of us are, are carriers of Ichabod. Amen. Movers of Ichabod. Amen. Dwellers of Ichabod. Amen. Company of Ichabod. I mean, how can you carry and be walking in the company of Ichabod? You will eventually become an Ichabod. Amen. If you must be led by the Spirit, you must have a company of those who are carriers of God. Amen. If you are carrying people around you who are acabods, who the glory has departed. Amen. You are about to aspire yourself. Amen. Somebody say you're about to aspire. Amen. You are about to aspire. You are about to come to that place. Amen. Whereby, amen, you, 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 you lose the sensitivity because you're carrying people who are not sensitive in the spirit. Amen. To be led by the Spirit, amen, is to be full of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Spirit begins to drive you, sometimes, amen, you begin to read the, 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 the book of Acts. We're going to go there eventually. When you begin to really want to really to be filled by the Spirit of God, number one, you engage the world. Somebody say engage the world. You must be a reader of the word. You must read at least five chapters a day. Meditate on the scripture. Meditate. Marinate your heart. Let the word of God abide into your heart. So anytime you want to make a mistake, the word of God reminds you. The word of God begins to speak to you. You begin to hear the counsels of the Lord. You cannot hear God's counsel without the word of God. If you are so consumed by newspaper, so consumed by the media, so consumed by CNN, so consumed by uh, what the president does, he doesn't do, and con you are so consumed by this, hallelujah, very soon, you will begin to lose the voice of God. You will not hear the voice of God accurately. Because why? You 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 be you be led by the media. You be led by the spirit of lie. You see, the spirit of lie is a force. The spirit of lie carries no faith. The spirit of lie is it has a carry a force of the 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 the, 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 the spirit of the age. And the spirit of the age, amen. It, it kills anything called faith. Anything that brings your faith that drives you towards the gospel. So when you begin to hear the things of the of the earth, the things it doesn't drive you. There's no spirit. But but Jesus says something. Jesus says the words that I speak, they are spirits and they are what their life the words that i speak they are spirits meaning these are spirits being released and there's life in it so it means that that is the holy ghost but when a man without the holy ghost is speaking they are spirits amen but with death they come with death and when the spirit of death is being released through words and you begin to hear such words it deafens your spiritual ears it deafens your sensitivity amen and very soon you become blind in the spirit very soon you'll be led by your own emotions very soon everything begins to erupt within you but when you begin to hear the true voice of god the bible says what well, faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of god hallelujah so when you begin to be, you become addicted in the word of god you become addicted to his word you begin to uh, meditate upon his word hallelujah in the book of Let's quickly go there. In the book of uh, 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 um, uh, Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Let's quickly go there quickly. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. And I want somebody to read it loud and clear for me. Hallelujah. Somebody with a very clear crystal voice. Be bold as you read it today. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Psalm 1. Somebody read for me quickly. 
Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Somebody read for me Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Yes, you make sure your voice is very clear, sir. Please go ahead. Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners. Stop there. Stands in the path of sinners. Amen. So blessed is the man. So if you want to walk in the fullness and in the blessings of God, you must abide. You must abide in the company of what? Not in the company of sinners, in the company of believers. Amen. If you are not a church goer, if you are watching telecast on television, watch it every time, that will not help you. Amen. You must be surrounded by eagles. You must be surrounded by eagles. Amen. Because hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> Show me your friend that will tell you who you are. Amen. Your friends, your company that you keep will tell you how level, how high you will go. That man who was a leper, that man had about four guys, amen, who was able to tear down the roof of the building and lower him before Jesus. Amen. If you don't have such friends, they cannot take you to a place of revival. They cannot lead you to a place on fire. Amen. To be led by the Spirit of God. Amen. If you must be led by the Spirit of truth, you must change your friends. Are you joining me today? You must change your friends. You must change your people. You must change your company. You must be surrounded by the right people. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody say surrounded. God had to separate Lot from Abraham. Because why? That could impeach his, his, his speed. That could hinder his destiny. That could, that could shift him from the wrong focus. Amen. And, and, and we have seen through the scriptures how wrong people, listen to me, when Joseph was with the brothers, his destiny could have been hindered, limited, even if he didn't die. Amen. So no amount of faith for the Joseph carry was enough for him to walk when as long as they are evil company as long as there are people that will obstruct his destiny as long as they are going different direction amen the favor could not work for him but the favor could protect him so god had to pull him out from the wrong company amen for his destiny for his success to be manifested easily hallelujah some of you god will pull you out from where you are god will take you away from every wrong company wrong forces and wrong evil people that will slow you down and bring you to a worthy place bring you to a place amen that will increase you in the name of jesus christ look at what it says now look at what it says in that in that same verse keep reading my brother keep reading someone hallelujah go ahead so read it again sorry no standard in the way of sinners. Uh huh. No sit in the seat of the scornful. Stop there. Somebody says scornful. scornful. What is scornful? Scornful, the word scornful means people that sit down and they begin to talk arrogantly. Hallelujah. They begin to talk arrogantly. They begin to speak. They begin to talk about pastors. Begin to talk about churches. They begin to talk about ministers. It is a place and a circle of gossip. Are you hearing me? This that's what the word calls scornful. It says, Blessed is the man that does not. So it means that you come under a curse. The anointing of blessing is a is a is a is paramount to an anointing, is a grace, is a mantle, is a dress. Are you hearing me? It's a flavor, it's a perfume, it's a fragrance. A that fragrance is called blessing. If it rests upon you, you can lose that fragrance if you begin to dwell among the wrong people. Are you hearing me? If you begin to dwell with people who begin to speak arrogantly, begin to speak boastfully, amen, all of a sudden, you will see that some things begin to happen in your life. Are you hearing me today? Praise God. Hallelujah. So you must understand, amen, run away from those who begin to speak boastfully, arrogantly, amen, begin to talk as if they are so heavenly, whatever it is, and it's as if they know it all, amen. Once they begin to speak like this, amen, if you don't run, the Bible says, look at that scripture again. Let's read it again. It says, don't know what? Seated in the seat of discomfort. Don't abide among wicked people. Don't abide among people who are just talkers, 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 talkers. Amen. It will affect your spirit, man. Amen. Depart from such. Depart from such. Amen. Hallelujah. But his delight. Look at what it says in verse 2. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law doth he meditate day and night. Hallelujah. If you must grow, you must meditate the scriptures. Amen. Somebody say meditate the scriptures. You must begin to meditate. Amen. Hallelujah. Five chapters a day. 
amen five chapters of this uh, of genesis five chapters of, of the old testament and five chapters of the new testament start reading that start reading that start reading that every day and you will begin to grow you will see by the end by the end of the week you will see that you have read about what 35 chapters so if you are reading like 10 chapters every day every day before you go to bed five chapters five chapters amen before you, you when you wake up five chapters hallelujah and you start reading the scriptures reading the scripture and you will see the bible says now look at what it says in verse 3 and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water it shall be like a tree why because it's fed amen and that bringeth forth his fruit in his season you begin to bear fruit the word called barrenness become foreign to you Hallelujah. The word barrenness become foreign to you. You become a doer of his word. His leaf, what shall not wither? What is leaves? Hallelujah. His leaves, the leaves are, are be released to cause a shade from sunshine. Amen. Sometimes the sun can be very brutal. Sometimes the sun can be very burning. Sometimes the sun can be very, 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 very biting. Hallelujah. But, amen. But, but the release of the leaves, amen, covers you, amen, from the rage of the sun. It brings a form of comfort. Hallelujah. Amen. This is what the leaves do. So now, what happens is this. His leaf shall not wither. It means that you become a shade. You become a covering for people. You become a covering for the family. Are you hearing me today? You become like a Joseph. Amen. You become a, a, a protector. Hallelujah. You become a shield from affliction, from storms. You become a bridge, bridge maker. You become a, you become a helper. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now let's read continuous for, fourthly. And his, his leaf shall not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall work, shall prosper as a result of the word. Amen. When you read the word of God, when you read, when you are back, when you begin to live, that's all he's saying amen hallelujah in uh, uh, psalm 1 a uh, uh, i said some joshua part of, uh, chapter 1 verse 8 amen this book of the lord that shall meditate day and night and what there you shall have what good success good success is guaranteed the less you read of his word the less success you are the less you attain success amen to be led by the spirit is to have the word of god inside of you what is the word of god the word of god is the spirit of truth somebody say the spirit of truth the spirit of truth will lead you into deeper truth. It will lead you into deeper mysteries. What is it? Why is the spirit of truth? Why is it so paramount to our day? Because of the revelation, the voice of God is within the word of God. Are you hearing me? The word of God has the voice of God. And when you, you feel that inside of you, God uses those word of God and begins to minister to you. And so some of us get distracted. Some of us will love to listen. That's why the Bible says, do if you read that scripture again, say, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. The counsel of the ungodly, the counsel of the ungodly. Some of us want to hear the counsel from the ungodly, not counsel from pastors, not counsel from a minister. Amen. If you talk about if ministers are counseling us, we want to argue with the minister. We want to go and meet a guy who is a psychologist who is very brilliant, amen. Well studied, has a degrees in, in psychology, amen. Sit down before him, hallelujah. And when he begins to talk, we want to listen, we want to take notes and everything. But it's ungodly. It's counsel. It's ungodly. It's not biblical. Hallelujah. And so thereby, it says, blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel. So what counsel are you walking in? What direction are you walking? Are you walking in the counsel of your television? In the counsel of CNN? Are you walking in the counsel of the wicked? Are you walking in the counsel of anthrax? Are you walking in the counsel of um, somebody put something on WhatsApp? Amen. They are monitoring the WhatsApp. So you are now walking under that consciousness of fear. Amen. You are dictating your life. You are walking consciously. You are scared of how things... Can you hear me today? Is somebody hearing me? hallelujah so this is how life has been amen many of us are, are are not walking amen under the counsel of the holy spirit amen hallelujah so i want, I want you to understand the spirit of truth can dwell it might not dwell inside of you but can dwell in spirit spirit led people when the spirit of god is is imparted into the into people the the, the the spirit of truth when you begin to listen to them identify them not listen there are two there are two there are two um vehicles in a man or there are two drivers in a man every man has two drivers some say two drivers or let me say three drivers hallelujah you can choose to choose which one should drive your vehicle amen every time there are either two passengers or three passengers in the car one can be the driver, two can be always be a passenger. Number one, it's either you're led by yourself, the self, the self. The self can be the one driving the car. And the spirit of God and even the devil, my, or the flesh, can be choosing to manipulate you. Amen. So when I'm using what's the flesh, I mean the old man, the old nature, the old man. Amen. The old man versus the spirit of God. Amen. 
they all want to drive you to a destination some of the destination you, you, you don't want to go there some the destination of the old man is to the valley and the destination of the, the the new man is to the mountain top amen the hill of the law the mount zion of the great king hallelujah so in other words now if for instance now they begin to manipulate you begin to hear strange voices trying to influence your emotions hallelujah which is your soul your mind and your will amen and whoever has the fullness of whoever gets your attention will lead you will direct you hallelujah so now if now for instance now you are being led you begin to listen to the spirit of truth in believers in the messages in the word of god in the life of people around you who carry the spirit of truth if you begin to listen to them god will begin to lead you god will begin to direct you god will begin to direct your footsteps you hear me so and so you will be led by the spirit and not by the flesh now the case is vice versa now if for instance now you are led by the flesh led by carnality led by the old man amen you will begin to go down in the valley you will begin to lose your joy you begin to see every sign why you should retreat amen if you continue you begin to experience more darkness more darkness more darkness more confusion hallelujah in your journey but when if you make a, a u-turn now and he says lord i want to be led by your spirit and you begin to lead, led by the spirit you begin to move it becomes more brighter more brighter more brighter more brighter to a perfect day that's how it is in the kingdom of god hallelujah so when you are being led by the spirit you begin to experience peace you begin to experience first firstly when you start in the journey it will experience opposition you experience limitation you experience oppression you experience rejection you experience even the wilderness you may seem like it's only you driving that direction everybody going the opposite way amen and thereby you will be resisted you'll be conflicted you'll be assaulted you'll be spoken evil of amen but if you maintain your journey you begin to experience the peace of god you experience the comfort of the lord you experience his prosperity you begin to experience his mercy you begin to experience the light of god amen and everything will begin to make sense all around you and everything you begin to do will be will be happening around now it's very very hard now now this is one of the things i want to make sure i make a point for you here amen now the first thing it says the counsel of the ungodly now in every christian life there is the temple the temple of the devil and the temple of god hallelujah now when is the temple of the devil in a life of a preacher or a life of a minister or a christian because there's a lot of christians now who are living a godly life a lot of preachers who are living on godly life and now so now you have a preacher now who is living an ungodly life amen you're not asking for the counsel of the lord how do you know if it's a godly lifestyle or how do you know it's a counsel from god because when a man is in tune with the spirit they can choose to obey the voice of god or they can choose to obey the voice of the flesh hallelujah so being filled with the holy ghost it means that you are you will have zero tolerance for the flesh or you have no room for the flesh amen so in other words now so now if you begin to interact with somebody who is filled with the holy ghost you will be definitely will get an answer from god god will give you an, an answer hallelujah but if now you are of the flesh just for instance i give an example here was a man philip was preaching in the church and the holy ghost just took him and and, and led him i've always said something to me people have always asked me say, say sir are you a prophet are you evangelist are you this are you that i say you know what by birth my ultimate call is to the office of an apostle all right apostle but you are a prophet okay there's what they call prophetic office all right but it's an apostle it's a call of an apostle you 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 you, you, you know it in the spirit hallelujah you just know it now but when you go to nations to go preach the gospel are you hearing me? You go when you go to nations to go preach the gospel, hallelujah! Like outside a crusade or whatever it is, the Lord Spirit of God will manifest through you as an evangelist. All right, you begin to do the office of an evangelist, preaching the gospel. When you come back and you begin to minister to one on one, okay, individually to the pastor or to the church, God now begins to use you as a prophet. Uh, you begin to repent for the sins of the church. You begin to repent for the sins of the people. Intercession. You are praying. That is the office of a prophet. Office of a prophet. Are you hearing me? Now, after that, they are now being led. Also, too, you are like, you are like for instance, I go in the plane and I'm flying. Amen. And sometimes the Lord will just say, okay, I'm praying for this pastor. I'm praying for the church. And I'm praying that the church be on fire. I'm praying for the anointing of the Holy Spirit to break forth in the church, in the service. Hallelujah. And as I begin to pray and I'm beginning to move and I'm asking God to do this, do this in the service. I can go there, minister, and come out. Now when I do that, I'm praying, whatever it is, I'm a saint messenger. Are you hearing me? I bring the word of the Lord and that's it. And I'm done. But 
there is another dimension. If the Lord says, now, son, go to the White House, all right? Go to the White House and go and start praying. Go to the White House, go and make a declaration. I divert my journey. Now, that office is usually the office of a prophet. It is the office of a prophet. Now, office doesn't mean I'm going to go and prophesy. Remember, God, Spirit of God took, took Ezekiel, lifted him up to the valley of the dry bones. He began to prophesy. Thus says the Lord. He may took him on the airlocks and he began to prophesy. Can these bones live? Prophesy. Speak on this. It's not usually the prophets is not actually to say, let me tell you the future. There are very few prophets that did that. Amen. The major one of the reason why God raised prophets was because of their intercession. Amen. All uh, inter intercessors are. are, are all prophets are intercessors, but not all intercessors are prophets. Hallelujah. So, in other words, he began to declare, be, begin to declare the prophetic word. Now, God wants to, if every time God wants to do something on the earth, every time God wants to do something in the church, he will always use a prophet to come and speak that word. Amen. To manifest. Now, when a prophet comes and he speaks the word, there will be revival or there will be judgment in the church or this church will close down or a cardboard is about to begin. Once that declaration is made, God now moves. Are you hearing me? God now moves. And when God moves just like this, God was about to bring judgment in a city. Hallelujah. In a city. And he was going over there to Lot's city. They were heading over there with judgment, with wrath, to go and, to go and release judgment. And the Bible says Abraham ran, begged him, come to the house, made an offering, just like Thanksgiving. Broke, broke a goat, killed it, slaughtered it. That will tell you that angels eat goat meat. <laughs> Amen. Broke goat meat and the rest and ate the goat meat. Amen. Hallelujah. And the Bible now says that what? Sarah shall be for the child. They went forth and went back to that city and they told him, Can, we can't hide anything from this guy. He has given us a sacrifice. Okay, let us tell him what is about to happen. Judgment is coming to that city. Amen. And after they left, Abraham began to pray, intercede, pleading for the city, pleading in prayers for the city. Amen. That God doesn't destroy that city. And God began to say, 50, if there are 50 righteous people. Hallelujah. Now, that is an office of a prophet. You begin to bargain with God. That's an evangelist work. That's the what? Office of a prophet. Amen. Hallelujah. The same Abraham can also be used. Are you hearing me? Now, that prophetic anointing of prophetic unction is to reconcile people back to God. Sometimes I'm in the plane. And when I'm in the plane, I begin to pray. Lord, as I'm going for this event, Lord, send revival over the city. Let, your rev let the fire of God visit this city. Let the churches come alive. Now that grace is an is a is a is an is a, is a prophetic is an apostolic prophetic anointing. Is a is an apostolic anointing focuses so much on the overall kingdom. Hallelujah, and it's the kingdom. You are not focusing on one church now. You are focusing on what in the geographical situation, asking God that the fire of revival break forth in the city. Hallelujah, Amen. That the fire of God break forth in the city. And there's a real manifestation of what God is about to do. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And uh, we, uh, this is what we are seeing. This is what we are seeing. That the manifestation of God's revival, the manifestation of his power. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. So this is what happens. Amen. So when you begin to pray and God expands your heart, you're not just focusing on one church now. You're focusing on the Varro kingdom in that geographical area that God releases fire. Now, what you are not doing now, you have tapped into the mantle of intercession. It is the highest office. Amen. And usually when you get into that realm, amen, it's one of the highest, highest call. You've tapped into another realm now that grace will begin to abound. And most pastors, most preachers don't get into that realm. But it's a realm that once you reach that realm, you become a father in the spirit. God now comes. Because now that is the original intention of God. Not just for one church, but for the whole city. That is glory manifest. Hallelujah. Back to what uh, I've, 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 I've marveled away. So what I'm trying to say to you is this now. So when you begin to, I, I'm going back to where I was. So when you begin to see, you begin to see, you begin to see, uh, you begin to see what God is doing in the life of people. Hallelujah. And you need a counsel of the ungodly. How do you design the, the counsel of the ungodly? From the right counsel of God. Amen. Number one, number one, number one. The spirit of counsel, hallelujah. Amen. The spirit of counsel will always come. Uh, with the spirit of faith. Somebody say faith. And the Bible says, what are the spirit? Their spirits and what? Their life. And when the spirit of counsel comes upon you, you will begin to, um, it comes in a soft way, 
And but when he comes, there is a spirit of conviction, there is a love of God, there is a witness in your heart when the spirit of God is being released. Okay, he, he, he is, 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 and the love of God, the, 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 the love of God, the fear of God, the witness of his spirit when God begins to speak. Are you hearing me? You might be hearing, say, the counsel of the ungodly. So, in the life of sinners, you, 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 you may also see that it's, a man can be sinful today, and all of a sudden, he starts giving you a godly counsel because the Holy Spirit can overshadow him as he overshadowed the donkey. Remember, the donkey stopped and began to speak to the prophet because he wouldn't listen. That was the counsel of the Lord. The counsel of the Lord was coming forth. But you must design it. I can be watching television and 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 and, 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 and somebody might just say something. I say, oh, that was from God speaking to me. It's a rema word. Are you hearing me today? A rema word will just come forth and jump into your spirit. And it's for you to grab it. It's for you to open your spirit and design it. Sometimes many of us are so quick in teaching, teaching people. Sometimes we should just calm down and receive. Are you hearing me? I've only said this to people, okay? If you are hearing the sound of my voice, you must understand from today, every, if you are going to be every man on the earth, including the devil, has revelation that you need for your next journey. There is always an answer that you don't know in the life of somebody that you despise. Every man, I don't care whether they are mad, I don't care whether they are devil, I don't care whether they're imbecile, they have one form of revelation, one form of insight, one form of answer that you don't know. That's deep. Think about it again. Every man knows something that you don't know, and you know something that another man did not know. The Bible says wisdom is like deep waters, deep waters, but it's a man of understanding that draws it out. Man of understanding draws out the, the revelation. Amen. From today, make sure you get three major points from every person you talk to. We are talking to somebody, make sure you don't be so interested in trying to talk and teach them, but interested in trying to grasp three truths that you need for yourself. Be an interviewer. Okay. Try and learn at least. Take everybody as a teacher. When I say to somebody, when you're eating a banana, you don't eat everything. You peel off what you don't need. And you take what is edible for yourself, right? Now, in every life, there is something that is edible for you. There is something the Spirit of God has put in that person. But you must be a scientific, you must be a spiritual researcher. You must be able to research the truth in people. A devil can sit in front of me and I can get two or three things that I need two or three revelatory things that he will say, that I say, ah, ah, now I get it. And I'll just keep quiet. You must be very, listen to me, the prophet overlooked the donkey. But I believe the donkey was giving him signs. Even when the donkey spoke. You, you, can't, you can't just, for, the donkey, for a dumb donkey to talk at that time, for the first time, it means that the don this guy was disobeying so many instructions. Even a beggar might tell him on the streets, don't go that place. Don't go that place. And you'll be looking at the beggar. Why, why is he saying that? And you proceed. No, it's an instruction from God. You know, I'm about to go out. You're looking for your keys. Your keys is going out. If something's happening, your car can't start. Everything is just breaking. God is trying to tell you, don't go. Don't go. If you don't read through the signs, you, you go and make a deadly mistake. Amen. So, you must identify the spirit of truth in every believer. You must be able to identify the amount of truth in this brother, amount of truth in this sister. Amen. Design when you're in the spirit. Design when it's from the, from the flesh. Design. Now, how do you know it's from the spirit? How do you design when a godly counsel is coming forth? Amen. As they began to speak, something erupts inside of you. Are they, in, are they living a life of prayer? Are they in the prayerful? Are they, are they living a life of prayer? Are they li living a life of uh, fasting? Amen. Even if they just come out from the place of prayer and you ask them a question, many times, many times, many responses that you get is from the Spirit. Hallelujah. Ungodly counsel is anything that is outside of God's word. It may even be in the word of God. But that, but that might not be is the counsel of God for your life. Hallelujah. It may not be that it's the counsel of God. Hallelujah. To be led by the Spirit. Somebody say be led by the Spirit. To be led by the Spirit is a very, very powerful. Amen. 
Glory to God. I want to read the book of Romans. Let's go click over there. Romans. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. I read from verse 13. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall not die. Ye shall die. But if ye through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. If ye through the spirit of the uh, through the spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, the dictates of the body, you bring it under subjection. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Amen. For many that are led by the sons of God. So when you are being led by the Spirit of God, amen, and everything that you do, every decision that you do, you are being led, being driven, being directed, being instructed by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. You are, that is the fullness of maturity. It means you've come to that place whereby you are now the Son of God and seen as the Son of God in heaven. Hallelujah. You are now a carrier. You know, your status is changes now from a baby, from an immature, Amen. And you are now a meat eater. You are now a son of God. Amen. To be led by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And like I told you before, to be led by the Spirit, one major one is to read the scriptures of read the Bible. Meditate on the scriptures. Amen. I give you a challenge now. Start reading five chapters, ten chapters a day. Five chapters before you go to bed of the Old Testament or the New Testament. And when you wake up, either the New Testament or the So what I do, five chapters of the Old Testament, five chapters of the New Testament every day so you get this you get you do your bible says that word have i hid in my heart that i may not sin against you amen the word of god is the spirit of truth and when the spirit of truth carries the light of god this spirit of truth carries the life of god it carries the life it carries the light it carries revelation and when it's inside of you it revives you it's, it, it brightens your containers are you hearing me? The counsel of the Lord, begin, it, it, God begins to use that counsel of God, the word of God begins to go, move through you. But if you begin to hear the counsel of the ungodly, the counsel of CNN, the, the counsel of news media, the counsel of your folks at work, the counsel of magazines and newspapers, you will be led by what? Not by the newspaper, but you will be led by the flesh. The flesh will begin to speak through all these things you read in your life because all these things carry death all these things carry death and the other thing is hallelujah glory to god hallelujah luke chapter 4 verse 1 where we read before and jesus being full of the holy ghost returned from jordan returned from jordan returned from jordan so Jordan is a place, amen, that God imparts his spirit upon you. Hallelujah. The Jordan is a place that you are being cleansed, cleansed, washed within, amen, and was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Was led by the spirit into the wilderness. Hallelujah. It was the spirit of God that sat upon Jesus and led him into the wilderness. Hallelujah. Somebody will be led today. Somebody will be led today into a place of seeking God's face. Somebody will be led to the mountaintop. Somebody will be led to the hill of the Lord. Somebody will be led by the Spirit into your encounter with Him. Amen. And as you meditate and as you have time with God, Amen, God will begin to lead you. God will begin to direct you. God will begin to protect you. He will begin to secure you. He will begin to cause a place that you begin to abide in Him. Hallelujah. And by the power of the blood of Jesus, I release the hand of God. And I decree in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know, one of the things you begin to read in this scripture, it says something. It says, and he was being led into the wilderness. Amen. Hallelujah. Because he was full of the Holy Ghost, he was not able to succumb, succumb to the temptations of the devil. The devil rained down so many temptations. The devil manifested in, his, in a bodily form. The devil whispered to him, spoke to him several things. And what Jesus said, the first thing he said was, The devil said unto him, That be the Son of Man, command the stone that it may be made bread. And Jesus said unto him, saying, It is written, That man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of the Lord. Every word of the Lord. Are you living by the word of God? Are you living by CNN? Are you living by what the media is saying? get the word of god inside of you and the voices of the devil will be overcome you'll be able to silence the voice of the devil the de jesus was able to resist the devil because he had the word of god inside of him are you hearing me today jesus the devil wanted him to turn the stone to bread that he may break his fast 
but because of the word of god he was able to continue in the strength of the spirit in fasting and in prayer and he was also exalted the devil took him exalted him to a high mountain the bible says and verse 5 and the devil taking him up into a higher mountain how the devil take jesus amen it's a spirit of pride it was being exalted it, was, it, it, was, it wasn't a visionary experience but the bible says he carried jesus amen so there was there was, there was the flesh was carrying jesus was exalting him hallelujah and showed him all the mountains of the world in the moment of time and the devil said unto him all this power i give unto thee the glory that is delivered unto me was who, who say to whomsoever i will i give it if thou therefore will worship me it shall be thine and Satan and Jesus says, Satan, get thee hence. It is written. You will see that word again. It is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shall thou serve. Again, the word of God proceeded out of him. Amen. Hallelujah. How much word of God? Now, when the Holy Ghost is you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you are being led by the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God will begin to give you scriptures because you'll be reading the word of God. So every temptation that comes, God gives you the spirit of truth begin to speak to you. It begins to supply you with the word of God. That's why the Bible says in Psalm 119, it says, Thy word have I hid in my heart, that I might not sin against you. So it's the word of God, if it's in your heart, you will not be able to sin against him. So Jesus could have sinned if the word of God was not in his heart. Hallelujah. This Jesus would have sinned, amen, if he was listening to the counsel of the devil. Remember this, the counsel of the devil is very deceptive. The devil will not come to him and says, I'm the devil. He will what? disguise himself like a strange voice, like his hearing a voice. I truly believe that the devil did not appear to Jesus physically. I believe it was voices. If the devil appeared to him, Jesus physically, then the, the, <laughs> Jesus looked at Peter and says, Satan, get it behind me. It, it wasn't written that G Satan was appearing bef before Peter or was there physically. No. In the same thing in the mountain, when he said, Jesus, look at what he says. And the devil said unto him, said, voice, said. He didn't say appear. Many of us look at it, we think it's a visionary experience or a visual experience whereby jesus appeared or the devil appeared to jesus no if he appeared it would be easy temptation easy the, jesus should have told you right away just get out because your presence is annoying me but the devil is very deceptive he uses voices to minister to us what kind of voice are you listening to no 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 don't go and die in the cross and jesus says satan get it behind me i need to go and i took this pen from my place of work i want to go and return this pen and your sister says, for what? My brother sister, keep that pen. What the, it's not a big deal. Why are you going to return the pen? And you're going to be like, okay, maybe it's not a big deal. No. If Jesus was there, Satan, get thee behind me. That is the voice of Satan. The voice of Satan can use people, can flow through people. That is the counsel of the ungodly. Are you hearing me today? The counsel of the ungodly was speaking through Peter. Jesus, you will not die on the cross. And Jesus rebuked Satan, get thee behind me. Jesus, hallelujah. And the devil said unto him, All this power I give thee, and the glory of, of, of them. For that is delivered unto me, and unto whomsoever I will, I give it. And if thou therefore will worship me. Okay, let me jump, 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 jump. And he brought him to Jerusalem. Ah, Jesus, the Satan brought Jesus to Jerusalem. And set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, Thou be the Son of God cast thyself down from us for it is written so it means that all these temptations was running through jesus head and the devil now after jesus has been quoting scriptures the devil came to quote scriptures now now remember this now people will come into your life and be quoting scriptures doesn't mean it's from god so when i use that word ungodly counsel that doesn't mean it's unscriptural it's scriptural but it's not what god is saying And he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from, them, of, from hence. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee. He's quoting Psalm 91. For and in their hands they shall bear thee up lest at any time they shall dash a, dash a foot against a stone. And Jesus answered unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all temptations, he departed from him for a season. 
Hallelujah. So we are seeing that these were all just voices, voice exchange, voices exchange in the brain, in the mind. This man carried the word of the Lord, but the devil just kept on. And Jesus was so full of power, the devil began to say, Why don't you just throw yourself down? Angels will catch you. That was suicidal. That was suicidal. That was suicidal. Why don't you turn these stones to bread? And it's like, you know how you are so anointed or you're fasting and you feel like, man, I need some, I want to perform some miracles here. What can I do? What can I do? Ah, man, you know, um, um, you know, you three, we done now. And now all these things are spirit of pride. And you might not even know, the devil will be the one exalting you, carrying you left and right. Like you've been be seeing things like, man, man, I want to manifest. And God is saying, son, only when I lead you, only when I direct you, do not do. Hallelujah. And verse 14, when you finally, when you're finally being led by the spirit, you go through all these tunnels, all these channels, all through these obstacles, you fight your way through and you're able to go through all these fights and struggles and you come to that place. Jesus now says something, verse 14, and Jesus returned in the power of the spirit. The power of what? The spirit. The power of what? The spirit. God will release the power of the spirit upon you today. You will release so much power, so much anointing, so much fire inside of you. In Jesus' name. Is somebody blessed today? Hallelujah. Today we're going to pray before we go. Hallelujah. We're going to pray before we go and asking God, Lord, release, you release upon me, release upon my destiny, release upon me right now. Even as I pray that, 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 that I will be led by your spirit. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray today? Are you ready to pray? In the book of Acts, we talked about how the fire of God came upon them and sat on their head. And they were provoked to go be witnesses in Judea, Samaria, and the other places of the earth. They were led by the Spirit. Today, I prophesy, you will be led. You will be led by the Spirit of God. I say you will be led by the Spirit of God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, as you begin to get yourself ready today, amen? Get yourself ready. Were you hearing me clearly, everybody? I hope. I hope I was able to yeah, yeah, come in with that. Father, my father, let me track. Let me track. Who is this one snoring? Is this, is this is somebody snoring there? I'll catch that person now. In the name of Jesus. Uh, the person ran away quickly. All right. Amen. Somebody shall fire. Fire. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh huh. Do it again. Thank you, Jesus. So you're going to pray this prayer loud and clear. Amen. How many of you want to be led by the Spirit of God? Amen. How many of you felt like you need to, you need the Holy Ghost to lead you? And he was, he led him. When the Spirit of God leads you, he protects you. Amen. Hallelujah. Shout this prayer loud and clear. Say, my father, my father. My father, my father. Lead me by your word. Lead me by your spirit. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Reba ba ba ba, shande rebe biya paradia. Irege de rebe bege be rebe biya paradia. Libran da reba ba rebe bege biya paradia. Irege de rebe be rebe bege be rebe biya. Lord, lead me by your spirit, ah. Lead me by your word. Irege de rebe bege be rebe bege be rebe biya. Irege de rebe be rebe bege be rebe biya. Irraba ba raba ba kaba shanda ba ha. Irodo ro, irodo ro, do ro do. Irege de rebe be rebe biya. Raba ba raba ba kaba raba ba raba ba kaba ya. Rebebe ya bara, ila bandele bre, irrege de rebebe rebebe ke biya bara dia, zaga da bara bara baba ya ba, irrogo do rebebe ya bara dia, zele bandele bre, zika bando robo boyo brondosa, ila ba la ba 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 ba. Livre de rebe de rebe de de rebe bia, irrege de rebe de rebe de gabaya, raba ba ba, raba bando rebe bio, zele bandele bre de rebe de rebe bia, rege de rebe de rebe bia bando rebe bio, irrege de rebe bia. In the name of Jesus, Zila Bando Raba Rebedia, Regate Rebe Rebedia Brando Rebio, Rebe Bebe Bebe Kasha, Shanda Brada Rebedia, Zila Bando Rebe Rebedia, 
Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Somebody read it loud and clear. I want, I want, I want, I want my sister from Atlanta to read it. My sister from Georgia. Read it loud. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. Any sister, any sister, go ahead and read. Hallelujah. Oh, except, except we have except we have so much spectators on the prayer line. Act chapter 2. Somebody read it. You can even hallelujah. Go ahead and read it loud and clear. Hey, sister. Verse 1. Verse 1. Keep reading. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. As of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. It filled the whole house they were sitting. Yeah. Go ahead. Then there appeared, then there appeared to them right in as of fire. Divided tongues as of fire. It was divided among them. Go ahead. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues that the Spirit gave them utterance. Hallelujah. And they were dwelling in Jerusalem, Jews, devout men from every nation under him. And when the sound occurred, the multitude came together and were confused because everyone heard them speak in his own language. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You can you can stop you, you can stop there, my sister. Now, Hallelujah. Praise God. You, you did well. Thank you for taking thank you for taking that bold step. So my question now is this: Who read and who, Amen? Who him who himself? Wrote that scripture. The book of Acts. Who wrote it? You see, Paul. Paul wasn't saved then. Now, <laughs> Paul. Paul has not been saved yet. So, who wrote it? Paul. Who told this apostle Paul? Who told this apostle Paul? I don't know. I don't get. Apostle Paul was not saved then. Apostle Paul was still persecuting the Christians. Hallelujah. Somebody says, look. So who wrote it? Look. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> oh, now, Jesus. Let me read here. Go ahead. Let me read here. The book of Exodus specifically mentioned what? But many in the book of Acts does not specifically mention its author. Yes. But many indicators point to look. Many indicators the point beloved, to look. Yes. The beloved physician in Colossians 4, verse 14. Amen. The author was then person as the one who wrote. Okay, what, what scripture is that? What scripture you just give to us now? Colossians or Corinthians? Uh, no, the first one was Colossians 4 verse 14. Okay, Colossians chapter 4 verse 14, okay? Alright. Yes. Uh, I read what it says. It says, uh, 
the beloved physician and Demas greet you. Go ahead, greet you. Uh huh. And Demas greet you. Uh huh. And then the second one is one X, verse one and two. Okay. Yes, and verse one and two says, uh, the former, the former account. Acts, Acts chapter one verse two. Yes, one and two. Yes, one and two. Yes, and to teach and to do, yes? Yes. Until the day in which he was taken, he was taken up after so, uh, the Holy Spirit had given commandments to the apostles whom he had chosen. And uh, this is much of the yes. He was a close associate of Paul. Where? The writer was a man of culture, as indicated by his literary style. He had a universal outlook and he revealed an interest in medical matters. Okay. In addition, church tradition uniformly declares that Luke was the author of X. Therefore, mm. the bulk of the evidence. But where, but where is the scripture that supports Luke as the author? Uh, that was Colossians four verse fourteen. Colossians four verse fourteen, but his name was not mentioned. Uh, no, sorry. His name was not mentioned. Uh, in Colossians four verse eighteen, eighteen or fourteen. Yes, it says, Look, the beloved physician and demons greet you. All right? And then it says, Salute the bedroom with a little But it says, And when this epistle is read among you, cause this to be read in the church. But it never talked about the book of Acts. Uh, yes. Um, here I was just reading a commentary. I was just reading a commentary. Okay. All right. Uh, yes. Okay. So I'm saying something here that is um um so we are saying so we are all agreeing or well I'm seeing that Luke is the one that wrote this book of Act. Okay. All right. He said yes. Okay. Now the reason why I'm asking this question is because the power of the Holy Ghost was displayed so much in so that the identity or the author of the book of Acts was not revealed. The next move of God, we have no identity. The next move of God, we, not, we have nobody to take the glory. Does that make sense? You are going to pray today. Are you hearing me? When the Holy Ghost sits upon you and it begins to drive you, hallelujah, the primary aim is to bring the end of self and to exalt Christ inside of you. Are you hearing me today? That is the manifestation of the book of Acts. Hallelujah. Now, that scripture, let's go back to that scripture, the book of Acts again. Because uh, I know that there's so much revelation the Lord is giving to us today. Amen. Hallelujah. My goodness. What a world today. Hallelujah. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Somebody say, my father gave me utterance today. So the first thing we're going to pray, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues of a fire, and it sat upon them. It sat upon them. It sat upon them. Ah, let the cloven fire of God, let the tongues of fire sit upon my head. Let the cloven, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Ah, are you hearing me? Cloven tongues of fire sit upon my head. 
Holy Ghost, sit upon my head. Opiamata begin to pray. Regezaba, Rebebia Barandia, Elegate the Rebebega Rebebega Bia, Irregada Rebaba Rebebega Bia, Irregada Rebebega Bia. Say, Holy Ghost, sit upon my head. Holy Ghost, sit upon my head with fire. Elegate the Rebebega Berebebia, Elegate the Rebebe Rebebega Berebebia, Maka, in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Am I the only one praying or you guys are distracted? <laughs> say my father, my father. By the spirit of God. By the power of God. By the global tongues of fire. Manifest upon my head. Open your mouth at thunder fire. Rebebeke be rebebeke be rebebia. Irrega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Orrega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Orrega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Raba ba raba ba ka be rebebia. Orrega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Irlabra ka da reba be rebebia. Orrega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Irrega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Rega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Orrega da reba be rebebeke be rebebia. Orrega da reba be rebebia. Orlabra ka da raga da reba ba ya ba. Irrebebeke be ya. Irrega da reba be rebebeke let your fire Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, Amen. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. The Bible says, do not be drunken with wine, but be filled with the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Say, Holy Ghost, intoxicate me with your holy wine. Intoxicate me with the wine of the Spirit. Make me drunken in the Holy Ghost. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Holy Ghost, Oh, I want to be drinking with a new wine. Let the fire of God Holy Ghost fill me Fill me with overflow Fill me with no wine Wine of the spirit Holy Ghost break out Ragadaria, Holy Ghost, 
in Jesus name we pray final prayer and the Holy Ghost gave them utterance some will say utterance And the Spirit gave them utterance. Holy Ghost, give me an utterance. Supernatural utterances. <laughs> Are you ready for prayer? Okay. Say, Spirit of God. Possess me with the utterance of the Spirit. Possess me with an utterance. Possess me with divine utterance. Possess me with divine utterance from heaven. Are you ready? What are utterances? Utterances are words. What are utterances? Utterances are decrees. So you're going to pray. Hallelujah. What are utterances? It means what? To speak out. Utterance means what? To speak out. To what? To speak out. God will give you the power to speak out. To speak out. That word have I put within you? Isaiah says, That word have I put in my mouth? Cause of fire upon my tongue. Lord, put your word in my mouth. Lord, put your word in my mouth. Put your utterances in my mouth. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Reggae deba, rebe and leggedia, and reggae In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Breathe in, breathe out. Let the power of God release its utterances upon you. In the name of Jesus, I unblock your mouth. Block your mouth. Right now, receive fresh unction. The unction of the Spirit of God. Let the unction begin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Somebody you blessed today? Amen. Hallelujah. We love you guys. I thank God for everyone today. Any quick question before we go? Hallelujah. Amen. Any quick question? Hallelujah. Amen. It is well, okay? You are blessed, you are favored, you are loved. Yeah? Amen. Hallelujah. God, God bless you. Be strong in God. All right now. Bye bye. Amen. God bless you. Bye bye. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you.
Bless you. Bless you. Alevraba sundo bozos.